So thank you, Stash, and thank you, Julia. <laughs> and uh, I'm taking you even farther east uh, to the so-called Central Balkans. Um, so we are already well behind the borderline, and uh, actually maybe we are on the other side of the border, since there are no, there is no bigger material culture here, maybe with one exception. So um, I'm, my talk is completely um, in line and related to what uh, Stasio just uh, presented. So um, to avoid any kind of repetition, uh, I didn't put any kind of uh, Cetina pots because you already saw a lot of them. So uh, I will try to answer a question that is why there is no belt bigger material culture in this area. And uh, maybe also trying to understand uh, if, uh, sorry, yes, why there is no belt bigger material culture in this area and uh, if maybe we can see some cultural models transmitted uh, in a, let's say, unconventional way. So uh, uh, I will start uh, uh, by presenting this map, which I don't like much, but uh, is, uh, let's say, depicting the drink sets uh, in the third millennium in this wide European area. But I choose this because usually this part uh, that you see here in orange is always white. There is always an horrible black void, which is also related to the history of research, of course, but not only. Uh, and so that, that's why I choose this map to start, which is depicting, of course, the so-called uh, Depas Tankard area with the Aegean influence, Anatolian influence, because I think it's rather important to point out uh, that it's not white here. So there are things going on also <laughs> in the third uh, millennium. Um, so uh, this talk is more or less divided into four main blocks, uh, which I tried to name in a rather funny way, because uh, uh, maybe we can, uh, after the, the lunch break, we are all getting tired. Um, I will try to address the concept of border of this area. Then I will get uh, more close to all the new archaeological data. And uh, maybe, I, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with this part of the Balkans. Uh, I'm afraid very few people. So <laughs> I hope that uh, it's going to be interesting for you. Uh, and then in the two blocks, I will try to sketch out some sort of conclusion. Or yes, or open questions, maybe it's better. So at the border by vocation, again, uh, so usually we are always confronted with this type of maps depicting on one side. This is, uh, was made for the Aegean. I just put this uh, like uh, um, um, put away because we, I, I, I knew <laughs> the problem about chronology that Stasho probably would have pointed out. So I think that is much more better to refer to what he already said. Uh, and uh, we have, of course, these two uh, divisions. Of course, it's quite artificial, but uh, it depicts very well the situation. So two main areas of influence. Of course, it was made for Aegean, but uh, it can apply also for this area here. And uh, here, with these two stars, uh, I underlined what are the southernmost uh, known, so actual belt beakers. So at least the two that I know. One is uh, Petrovaradin uh, along the Danube, but not the Rizos Tripovats. If you know you bigger people, if you know other examples, please let us know. But these are the only two that I know um, so far. So uh, indeed, this area has always been depicted as at the border by vocation, border in respect to the Aegean, of course, first and foremost, but also in respect to other supposed to be, let's say, higher culture of the northern part of the Balkans, so around the Danube area. And that, uh, as uh, also Sasha pointed out, that also much to do uh, with the way archaeology was, uh, uh, was uh, undertaken uh, uh, last uh, century, so on Yugoslav period, early, and so on. 
Um, of course, uh, I don't need to point out here that what, of course, we perceive as borders and areas uh, which we are tracing uh, by the spread of material culture are somehow questionable and artificial. But even in this case, uh, again, I'm pointing this out uh, uh, again. And it can be very misleading. Um, yes. So, uh, recently, uh, thanks to our collaboration with uh, uh, Alexander Bulatovic and Mark van der Linden, uh, that uh, is there with us, <laughs> uh, we uh, were able to date the, what is known in the literature as the post Vucedol cultures of central Balkans. Vucedol collapses and then there are um, regional phenomena that are emerging, uh, and uh, until uh, this work, they were like fluctuating in time in the third millennium. So we were not really, um, we didn't know exactly on the base, of course, of relative chronology, pottery typology, where they were placed in time. So there are not many dates, but uh, the good thing is that for the second half of the third millennium, at least these three, let's say, cultural complex, that are Belotic, Bela Cerkva, Bubany, Hum Tri, and Armenohori, um, could have been quite uh, fairly dated. Of course, we need much more radiocarbon dating, but this is what we have, so let's start from this. Um, the most important thing is that we have a, a major um, uh, chronological depth in respect of what, for example, was pointed out uh, by Maran uh, lately in 2007. So every, all these phenomena were compressed at the very end of the third millennium, but now we really know that they were lasting longer, they were much more complex. So what I'm going to argue today is that these three archaeological cultures or cultural group actually can be grouped together and be considered as, as one. So you can aggregate these dates, uh, this, this data that we have, uh, and uh, also trying to understand why putting all these uh, uh, groups together, uh, there are no bell beakers uh, there, although they were perfectly um, accessible on one side in the north, of course, and the other side mediated by uh, Cetina communities uh, in the um, western part. Let me start from Belodic Bela Cerkva. Again, we have the two beakers here. Uh, we have two main groups. Uh, the northernmost is, uh, of course, the older one, um, which is this, uh, the, 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 the first uh, uh, cemeteries uh, that were excavated. And uh, a huge number of those uh, uh, burials, uh, burial under barrows, are also here concentrated in the Chachak area. So what is uh, uh, important to point out is that we have uh, central graves with innovation and incineration, and poor grave goods, and uh, um, quite a lot of emphasis on the grave construction. For this group, Belotic Bela Cerkva, no settlement is known so far. What is important to underline is the iconic Belotic Bela Cerkva vessel in this version with just one handle, which uh, uh, is uh, believed to uh, signalize somehow this uh, culture, this cultural group. We have very few uh, decorated pots but these are the exception rather than uh, the normal, the, the, the average Belotic Bela Cerkva uh, grave, which are these again, they are part also of the um, work uh, um, that we presented in Radio Carbon. So just to see how they are looking like. So very black, very undecorated, not very attractive. And these are uh, so inhumations in graves. There are other type of vessels, though, that are uh, quite also iconic for another group, which is uh, the group that I'm going to present at uh, the end, the Armenohori one, and uh, also these are rather uh, widespread in this uh, area. Yes, the distribution of tankards Belotic Bela Cerkva type are not at all exclusive of the area I presented to you before. 
but they are widespread. So I think this is the northernmost example. And uh, there was, um, I, I took this by uh, Gabriela Gussar's book, <laughs> uh, of course. So we are far, more north, this is the, the arrow here. So please point uh, to Hungary. Uh, and, uh, um, but we have, uh, of course, also um, many of those examples in the south. So, uh, and especially um, in another key area, for the so-called Armenochori culture, which is uh, um, uh, south-eastern uh, uh, Albania, so this part here. I'm referring to, with the name of present and modern countries because uh, it's quite uh, difficult uh, if you don't know the area very well, um, because it's quite uh, fragmented, let's say, as, um, as landscape. So um, forgive me for using uh, present-day name of countries. Um, so, uh, and we have a huge number from uh, uh, boroughs, put under boroughs, and from settlements. Yes. Um, where are the settlements? So, not much, uh, not very far away. So, we are like uh, um, from the core area of the Belotic Pela Circle, we are about 100 kilometers uh, uh, towards south. We have uh, another, let's say, cultural complex that is called Bubain uh, Hum, uh, of course, uh, from the name of the two main sites, uh, which is Bubain, um, that you see here. It's not existing anymore because this was completely excavated. And Velika Humskachuka, uh, which is very impressive. The picture is not uh, rendering how big this mount is because this tell is because it's a, a settlement on a natural hill. So. It looks very huge, uh, but the, what I wanted to point out uh, are not the, the beauty of the landscape uh, close to uh, Tunis area in southern Serbia, but uh, the, the point that in this area, so this cultural group was defined because of settlements, and there is no um, cemetery at all uh, can, that can be um, connected to this cultural group. So thanks to Alexander Bulatovic and Dragan Milanovic, uh, the um, Buban was re-excavated after the old excavations. So we have a stratigraphy, but uh, uh, unfortunately for the period of time of our interest, we have very, very few uh, data. So I just uh, uh, circle this here. But nevertheless, uh, Alexander Bulatovic was able to take samples and to date them also uh, with us, but uh, uh, it's not really a huge amount of data that we can uh, rely on. So we have these uh, structures. I don't know why this is red. I'm sorry because it's the same uh, um, level. But uh, uh, at least, so we have very few structures dated to the second part of the third uh, millennium BC. And uh, on the so called uh, face Bubain Hum 3, and just one radiocarbon date for a mixed level for Bubain Hum 2, which is supposed to represent uh, early Bronze Age 2, so the middle of the third millennium. So this is the pottery. Uh, and you see also here uh, there are some. Uh, okay, there is not all belonging to the same period, but there are some, uh, um, let's say, decorated vessels as well. But uh, what I'd like to point out is what uh, was uh, known uh, before the new excavations. Uh, so these three uh, entire pots published by Garashan in, uh, again, uh, not uh, decorated uh, and very uh, character with a characteristic shape for southernmost areas. So, uh, coming to Armenohori, which is the core of my uh, research and my presentation, I would like to start with this uh, uh, image, which is very iconic of what was also the research uh, in geographic Macedonia. For geographic Macedonia, I intend northern part of Greece, north Macedonia, eastern Albania, uh, part of maybe uh, Montenegro, southern Serbia, uh, Kosovo, and part of eastern Bulgaria. So it's a very all-embracing definition for geographic Macedonia. 
uh, in, um, where the research, so this is the typical landscape where uh, pluristratified uh, settlements tell, and most of the research, like the one that did Earth Day in the 30s and before, uh, was made during military campaigns uh, to the mean, by the mean of those trenches, taking all the pots and uh, trying to make sense of, uh, of them. Um, unfortunately, for this period uh, uh, and uh, this huge area, so here you can see more or less all the sites that can be ascribed to the so-called Armenohori culture. So we have uh, really few, um, uh, few esca well excavated sites, especially in northern Macedonia, unfortunately, in Pelagonia. So that's why uh, the, the Sovian, which is a very small village, one hectare, excavated by the French School of uh, Athens, where I'm working since many years, um, despite being uh, at the margin and a very small one, represents a sort of key to understand also other contexts. Um, again, this is not, uh, uh, Sovian is not important uh, because it's a huge site uh, or whatever, the only importance of Sovian is that it's completely published, completely studied, and all the pottery was published. There is radiocarbon dating and endochronology. That's the reason why. <laughs> and that's the reason I'm starting from uh, Sovian, which is a wonderful uh, small site. Uh, we're located in the Korcha Basin and is part of a site uh, system around the, the ancient Lake Malich in which there was a major site, Malich, and possibly very small sites all around this, uh, this lake that's not existing anymore because it was drained. So you can see here this. And we uh, spot several sites because we made uh, uh, five year long surveys, uh, targeted surveys in the area. So um, here you see the levels pertaining to the third millennium BC, so the second half of the third millennium BC. We have a stratigraphy from early Neolithic to Iron Age with several gaps. The most important one is at the beginning, so the first part of the third millennium BC is unknown, but not only in Sovian, in the most part of geographic Macedonia. Uh, but we have a lot of abundance of uh, data this time um, in a sharp contrast with what we just saw with Tsetina for settlements. So, uh, and as you see, we have also wonderful wooden structure. There is a huge, uh, uh, huge, there is a, <laughs> um, uh, uh, here a, a dwelling structure connected with some sort of uh, uh, um, passage uh, to other uh, structures which were just uh, uh, um, individuated uh, just for uh, small parts. So, um, thanks to dendrochronology, we matched so dendrochronology, radiocarbon, uh, pottery typology, uh, stratigraphy, and uh, at the moment, so for this period of time, this is the most solid and reliable, reliable sequence. And uh, uh, what is also mm, I, I like to point out is that maybe in the old pottery assemblage, there are also uh, two, three possibly set in a fragment. I'm saying possibly because I, I, I'm not believing myself, but it's in the sharp contrast with the completely plain and undecorated pottery of all the excavation. So, yes, so this is a famous, uh, uh, iconic uh, Armenohori type of smoking pot of uh, you want to call maniature oven and so on. Uh, and of course, that's I put the most uh, uh, typical uh, type of uh, uh, Armenohori pots. And there is uh, one, I just put this here because it's the only um, vessel, it's a single one, so it's not, there are two pieces actually, uh, which reminds uh, somehow a beaker <laughs> because it's also without handles. I'm not arguing that this is uh, something that has to do with bell beaker, but for sure we have a shape which is completely different uh, in the pottery landscape of this area. So just, uh, yes, but uh, we have also cemeteries. So Armenohori in comparison to the other two groups uh, have also cemeteries, which are uh, covering a time span of 500 years, 400 years, Cerro Figado, uh, which is in Northern Greece, and Ranutovac, which is in uh, Southern Serbia. And we have uh, in uh, one cemetery, so Cerro Figado, 
in most innovation, but also a few <laughs> incinerations. We have a orientation of the bodies toward, with the head toward south, uh, female facing uh, left and male facing uh, uh, right, more or less, the iconic uh, grave goods, which are extremely poor. One, sometimes maybe two uh, bigger uh, of these uh, double-handed beakers. Uh, uh, also some metal, but very rare. So it's a quite a large cemetery and we have five pieces of metal or something like this. And the other, the, which was also excavated by Alexander Bulato, which is Ranutovac, and also here we have very typical Armenohori pots and something that might be connected to Tsetina as well, which is this, which Maran identified as a vast bowl, I agree with him, and a pedestal with this sort of openings, which we saw uh, in Stasio's presentation. So Alexander Bulatovich agrees with me, but nevertheless, I think that this connects, uh, may connect with Tsetina. And there are also some uh, um, vessels that Sasha Forenbacher showed us that might be really uh, following also, uh, according to the shape, uh, some uh, Armenohori uh, vessels. Yes. So uh, I told you that I started from Sovian because uh, we have several nice sites but uh, um, no stratigraphy is published, uh, and at least, uh, so for all the, the information that I can gather, um, so we have quite a, all the settlements are in this area, more or less. So yes, in this area, and uh, on the basis of the relative chronology of the published stratigraphy and the published data, we see that most of them have a very uh, sharp gap in the beginning of the third millennium. Uh, and uh, another gap at, uh, this is sharper in the region, uh, let's say at the very beginning of the second millennium. So um, the, one of the hypotheses is something, something was going on um, and uh, there was a, a sort of uh, large uh, somehow restructuring of the settlement pattern, so as hypothesis, because you can see here, this is Arhontiko in northern Greece, uh, so we have a really quite a lot uh, of structures, so maybe it was, uh, so if you consider Sovian, we have just one piece, <laughs> um, in Arhontiko several pieces, we have C14 datings of all this uh, site except for Malich, but uh, uh, most of the data are still unpublished. And here we have also, in one of these sites, which is Armenohori, we have one thing that might be a uh, risk part of Valdvikers tradition. And here you see uh, also this is a modified plate from Sasha's book to which I added. This was identified by Lawrence Ramsdorf. And uh, uh, so this is given as a sort of uh, uh, risk card uh, um, that can be uh, represent the southernmost uh, example of this type of object uh, in uh, this area. Of course, uh, taking, if I take this alone, I'm, I have a lot of doubts. Uh, if I'm putting this in the Cetina, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, context, uh, yeah, it may be. I, I doubt it, but okay, it has two holes and this something uh, is a, a, a single, um, so uh, a single uh, object. So less is more. <laughs> I argue and I'm trying to uh, wrap up all the uh, things that I said so far, is that uh, uh, we have uh, these three groups which are always considered uh, uh, as distinguished group uh, that we can put them together. Because I think in my opinion there are much more similarities than differences. Although of course our um, our knowledge uh, has a lot of holes. So in all this group, pottery in uh, graves, except for one case in Mladic, Bela Cerkva, is uh, not decorated everywhere. So less is more, no decoration. We really don't want any kind of decorated in our grave goods. We have very few uh, drinking vessels. We have, of course, uh, quite a lot of diversity in funerary structures, as uh, I show. So we have, uh, of course, uh, burial barrows, but also flat stone structures. Sorry, I didn't mention this. So in the Ranutovac one, for example, they are like a sort of uh, uh, stone platforms, uh, and both um, 
with light. What we can also see, and we saw also in, uh, uh, so in, in several examples, but I just put the Belotich Belatzerkva vessels, but it's not the only one, is that uh, ceramic indicate for sure long distance contacts, so from the Aegean to the Hungarian plane. So um, I think it is in this case, uh, uh, you can really argue that uh, there is a, um, a sort of uh, cultural uh, um, identity somehow between these groups which can be opposed at least for as we can see from several uh, um, from the objects so for, uh, for for the cemeteries and not only to uh, the neighbors especially uh, Cetina in which we see uh, let's say these two groups which are really extremely close uh, and I also want to mention uh, that uh, also in uh, central Albania we have uh, Setina potters, potters, of course, from caves, from Blasi Cave, where there is stratigraphy and C14 as well. My bed is still unpublished, if, <laughs> if I publish soon. Um, and we have also, but something that uh, we can uh, uh, distinguish these groups for uh, lifestyles, widespread of use of decorated versus undecorated pottery, but also for technological choices, because we did, uh, also this is unpublished, uh, a pilot project with Giulia Ricchi and Silvia Micone uh, about uh, the pottery um, technology and uh, comparing Dalmatia and the Peloponnese. Uh, and uh, I'm doing with Tobias Kraft also uh, pottery technology in a diachronic way uh, of Sovian. And we see that also the pottery recipes are quite different. So Cetina pottery seems to be, at least the samples that we have, uh, seems also characterized by a large use of shamot, which in the third millennium you will never found, at least in the Armenohori sites that uh, uh, we analyze. Yes, so uh, why there are no bad people in the central Balkans, uh, although mm, on the they can be they were available somehow as idea in the north and partially also in the west. I think because uh, uh, we have to see this at a micro scale level that the so called Belotic Bela Cerkva, Bobani Hum Tri, Armenohori communities, how you want to call, uh, they were characterized by a different lifestyles in comparison to the other neighboring communities, and they were not aware that they were at the periphery of this bell bigger phenomenon. They just see a sort of alterity between their use, their tradition, and their, their immediate neighbors. So uh, my opinion is, uh, but uh, this is uh, of course a uh, uh, working one, that uh, uh, the bell beakers did not pass uh, because there were no interest at all in this, uh, uh, even though they were uh, available, as we saw with other type of contacts, and then in this thing I'm connecting also of uh, what uh, uh, Martin just also, of course, pointed in his uh, uh, presentation of this uh, selective integration of things that we, uh, as community, can accept or not. So there are, of course, uh, uh, possibilities of uh, contacts of accepting something, but I, I think that in that case, uh, uh, those communities uh, simply had different type of lifestyles and values and they uh, were not interested in accepting this innovation. So thank you very much. And uh, yes, <laughs> I finished.